So, hi, nice to see you all here. Um, I just arrived, so I'm glad I could see at least a part of the whole presentation. So, let's start with the topic I'm about to speak about. Cool. So, climate change. I would like to ask you first, before I begin my speech, please raise your hand, those of you who believe that the climate change is a real thing nowadays. Raise your hands. Cool. So, I'm here for the right audience. Excellent. And who of you thinks that the changes that are happening now are stoppable? Raise your hands. Oh, fewer, fewer hands than before, right? Cool. Well, the thing is, whatever is happening now, it's unstoppable. We already passed the point where we could actually stabilize the climate change that's happening right now. Why? Because remember the topic of today? Not yet. Will in future? That's what every generation was thinking before us. And why? This is the reason. On July 30th, 1994, Lithuania has beaten the highest temperature of all times recorded in Lithuania, and that was 37.5 degrees Celsius, and that was recorded in Zarasi. Well, seven days earlier, I was born. So this issue has been around my whole life. Have you ever thought about what climate change is doing to you, to your environment? How does it affect every single step and your decision you make every single day? Raise your hands, those of you who think about it regularly. Sometimes? Once a year? <laughs> At school, right? When you have to do this topic, because it's compulsory nowadays, but yeah, it takes one lesson and then it's just forgotten. Well, the thing is, <laughs> well, as presented, I'm a geography teacher, so I'm used to the answer, uh, the question, why? Every single time I'm about to speak about something that doesn't even uh, have to do with climate change, students ask the same question. Why? Why do I have to listen? Why this stuff again? Etc. So my question to you is, why? Why do I have to talk about climate change right now? And why is my topic small changes now, in regular days, or huge changes later? My answer to you is, just look around what's happening right now in Lithuania. I'm not even talking about global problems. Forget them, right? They're far away. They're very dangerous. Let's live here. Well, please, raise your hands as well. Those of you who regularly check Meteo on News, which is Lithuania Hydrometeorological Station. Cool. Also nice. Well, those of you who have checked this, you probably noticed two things. First of all, this April that we experienced, well, a month ago, was high rocketing. Just a few records we have beaten in one single month of this year. It was four of them. First of all, highest temperature of the month, precipitation was the lowest in records, etc., etc. Not every day, right? This should not happen every day, not every week, and not every month. April was recordly, this month is recordly. Whatever brings the future, we don't know but the climate is changing definitely. Also, the next question, what for? What for should we take small steps to stabilize whatever is happening right now? For any given reason, whatever you can imagine for, it's worth it. Is it for you, for yourself, for any future generation, for any tree or animal that's affected by any change that's happening right now? Any reason to adapt small changes in your lifestyle is worth it, believe me. Because people, almost 25 years ago, haven't thought about it. Why should we change something and what for? And this is what we have today. High rocketing news every single month, every single week. Is it in Lithuania or around the world? Every day something's happening that's unusual and it's called an anomaly of the climate. Well. I was not one of them. I was always the one who thought, well, what can I do to stop all these things? Because first of all, when we have a problem, we always look for a solution, right? And if we have faced the problem, what we do now, what do you think? What is the problem? The climate? 
Not really. The climate has been around for longer than we have been on Earth. So the problem probably is us and our habits. As well as the solution, we are the solution. So I thought of a few simple things that I could adapt in my lifestyle to make the problem I create also a solution I can force. My first step was small changes of everyday regular habits. And the first thing was, of course, the thing that no one can live without is water. I chose to not buy anything bottled, right? I got my own cup, I got my own bottle, a few straws I tested out, and my suggestion, the glass one is really good. If you're about to change that, also many bags, because, well, why not? Why do we have to use plastic or even paper or any other things for one single use? Just rethink how many choices we make every day and how many resources every single decision we make requires, right? Just a simple, I don't know, bottle of water also requires some resources, some workforce, some transportation. Second step I took was to slow down and enjoy the moment. Raise your hands, please, those of you who like their coffee to go. I'm putting my hand down because I hate that one. But if you're the ones who really enjoy a coffee to go, just imagine one year has 365 days, right? If it's a good year. If not, it's 364. But if you would like to drink a coffee to go every single day of your life, in one year, you would have 365 disposable cups for one single drink every day, as well as lids, straws, sleeves, because, well, you probably in the winter or just regularly drink your drink hot, not cold. If it's cold, it's even worse. Then you probably stir sugar, you need uh, something to stir with, you take a napkin, etc. So this is what makes you rush through life, and this is what you create without even thinking how much trash it creates, how much resources, this one single cup that you probably drank in just a few minutes and without even enjoying just rushing around your life, just slow down. Because everything can be just one single cup, you sit down and just enjoy the moment. You enjoy a coffee, you enjoy a drink, you enjoy this particular moment right here, right now, and you say, well, this is life, right? When you can actually afford to slow down and enjoy whatever is around you. Third step is to be open-minded for new experiences. And this one was a big one for me because this brought me so many nice things in my life. It made my life of the highest quality I can imagine right now. Because when you're open-minded for new things, you discover new things. You break the old habits that marketing has created for you and you say, nah, not for me. I'd rather choose what I want to have around me. I'd rather choose what I eat, I'd rather choose how I look, as well, whatever I consume. My, one of the first discoveries was whatever is unpackaged. And yeah, there are many things that you don't know. For example, right of th at the back of the photo, it's just soap, right? Regular soap. It's just soap. Looks pretty, pretty old, right? Like grandparents used to use it. I use it nowadays as well. Why would I have to use plastic around me? I don't like this stuff. I experience with new things. Whatever is in the front, well, the black one is actually also a soap, a charcoal soap. Uh, the one next to it is a shampoo, and the one in the back is hair conditioner. Experience with new things. Find new things for yourself. And maybe you will discover something that you have never thought about before. And maybe it will change your life for the better, give you a better quality of your life, instead of rushing through cheap stuff that doesn't actually serve you any purpose. It's just marketing that has created some habits for you, so you just bring money to someone. When you say, stop, I slow down, I'd rather experiment with things that actually are my values, high quality and good ingredients. The other thing is to go back in time and to use what was the best. For example, when I bought um, a razor, 
my mother looked at it and said, ooh, your father and I used to use those ones 20 years ago. And I was like, cool, those 20 years ago were probably pretty nice, nice years. So experiment with things. Don't think that the society today has the best solutions for everything. It just doesn't. Some things were just better in the past and they just got broken during the time they reached to us. Just some things were bought by money and they don't serve any purpose to you at all. So just start listening to whatever is inside of you and says, well, that doesn't feel right. Just skip it. Don't consume it. Don't be a part of it. A fourth step is my five big things. First of all is refuse. We don't need so much stuff. Believe me, I'm a traveler. That's why it said that, right? I travel around the world for a pretty long time. I lived in different countries for more than 12 years. And what I realized is all I need fits in one backpack. And this one backpack should be as light as possible. And when I, every time when I get after a big trip home, I look at the stuff I left behind and I think, geez, really? I need this much stuff when I actually was living for a month out of a backpack and I was more happy than I am coming back to my home where it's just full of things I probably haven't touched for a year. Just refuse, say, no. Does it serve me a really good purpose? It doesn't? Skip it. Reduce. We don't need so much stuff. We don't need five pairs of shoes or ten pieces of different clothings. You might just have one really good thing and enjoy it for a long period of time instead of having hundreds of small things that you don't even get used to. Just say, well, I'd rather choose one really good one instead of many useless ones. Reuse, well, whatever you can. Try not to consume new goods. Try and maybe look for whatever can be reused. Because reuse things actually bring more happiness than new ones, especially if we're talking about clothing or items for your home. As well, recycle. Recycling nowadays is a big topic, especially in Lithuania, right? The topic of recycling has started maybe 10 years ago or so. So nowadays we're used to it. Really? Raise the hands of the, those of you who actually recycle honestly. Well, still not everybody, see? So there is a way to go. And rot, finally, a big issue if we're talking about landfills, is if you have a chance to compost, please do so. Separate whatever um, organic foods you have left over and don't throw them into the landfills. That's a big issue if we're talking about um, climate change and whatever is affecting it. So, I have chosen to take my own goods to the store and check what I can buy without packaging. The other thing I did was I was experimenting with whatever was around. So basically, let's not buy stuff, let's create stuff, right? Let's just take a few simple items and try to clean with them, try to live with less things, like minimalism is a big thing. And it's actually more freeing than having lots of stuff at home. Finally, step five, and I'm rounding up, is probably that's coming out because I'm a teacher. Remember, knowledge is power. We have something that's super powerful right in our pockets, right? It's our cell phones. It's basically everything a human being has created or knows with, with just one touch, right? With one Google away. Instead of looking for memes or funny cat videos online, Educate yourself, because knowledge is power. Don't waste your time with things that don't serve you any purpose. Rather, look up a few questions, question yourself things, and Google them. Educate yourself, because if you want to see a change, a nice change, be the change you want to see. Adapt a few things so you can be the ones who created a nicer future for any future generation, as well as if you want something done right, don't wait for the companies or politicians to make any decisions. Say you are the problem as well as the solution. So start by yourself. And if you want something done right, do it yourself. So 
Good luck adapting small changes. Google them so you'll know whatever fits you best, as well as thank you for your attention.